forward to this. All right, welcome back to chapter five of our Blue Book series. Uh, we're going to be going over variables today, so we'll jump right in. Uh, so in DM, uh, variables can be used to store and manipulate data. We've gone over this in some of the other videos. Uh, there's several types of variables you can use, and so we're just going to go over a few examples. So the first and most obvious one, I think, is going to be uh, global variables. So uh, if we do this, that's all we need to do to create a global a uh, variable named weather, and we're going to give it a default uh, starting value. And let's go ahead and give ourselves a couple of verbs. So all we're doing here with these two verbs is the first one is going to output whatever the global weather variable is to the user. And the second one is going to let us set our global variable to whatever we enter. So we look up and you can see it's another beautiful day and we set the weather and we look up again and you can see now it looks a little cloudy. That's it. Uh, and something to keep in mind, because this is a global variable, this means if there was multiple uh, players on the game and one player was to change the weather, all players that looked up the weather would see whatever they changed it to. So that's kind of it for global. Um, the other common type of variable you're going to be using is going to be an object variable and uh, these are going to be associated with an object and different objects can have different values for the same variable so we're going to create a few new objects and give them different values so first we're going to give all objects in the game world a new variable named value and we're going to set it to zero. So now every single object now has access to this. So if we were to, well, let's give ourselves a way to check the value of our existing objects. So if we do uh, so check value, Okay, so now what we're going to do here is we're just grabbing the objects uh, near our player and we're going to uh, just output whatever the value of that object, which we've named O here, we're just output that value to our player. So we'll come up here if we have a car so you can see we check the value the car's value is zero it's easy if we had multiple objects you can see it lets us pick house is zero the car is zero great uh, so let's go ahead and change the value And all we're doing here is uh, basically the same thing. We're going to grab all the objects, and then we're also going to ask the player for a number to input. And we're going to change the value of our object to whatever number was entered. So if we run this, come up to our car, we'll check the, oh, we'll check the value of the car. Car is zero house is zero. We'll set the value now of the car. It's probably a little expensive, so let's say 75,000. And now we check the value of car, and you can see car is now 75,000. 
uh, and the house will still remain at zero. So let's make uh, just a few objects just to clarify what's going on here. So we're going to say, we're going to make new object gem. And I went ahead and added a couple new icons to the project, which you can grab through our Discord if you want, but it doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to use them right here. And let's create And we're just setting the icon state, which you can see right in the file. And we're giving its default value a different number. We're going to let it start at 1. So we'll make a couple more gems. So now we have a few different gems that we should be able to place on our map now which we come into our object tree and you can see gem and there they are. So we'll put this down, this down, and this down. So now let's go into the game. And so if you remember the car and the building were both at a starting value of zero. So we're gonna check these. You can see 150, 100 of the three gems and that is because we changed their starting value so of course we can also set their new value set this and now we check the value again and you can see now it's what we changed it to and we're only changing this individual objects uh, value so if we were to come into the map real quick and place another one of these gems. I'll put it way down here just so it's out of the way. We'll go ahead and run. And you can see we have a gem down here and a gem up there. So let's check the value of this one. It's 100. Check the value of this one and it's 100. So we'll come down here and let's set this one to 5,000 check and you can see it's 5,000. We'll come up and check this one now and you can see it's still 100. That's because uh, this is just a local object variable and it is only for this specific object. Um, even if it's the same object they're still different so they have their own variables. So with that in mind, let's kind of do the opposite. So we're going to make another global variable, but this is going to be at a lower level. So we're going to make another object. Okay, so we just made a new object uh, magic paper. So it's a magic paper object. And we gave it an icon and we go in ahead and gave it a global variable named message. And this is a little different. So for value, as I showed you, every even if it's the same object, it has different values. That's independent of the object. And for magic paper, we're making a global variable named message. And that basically means if we change the value of one magic paper, all other magic papers in the world will have their value changed. So let's go ahead and just do this real quick. So if we go to our map and we're gonna put down two different magic papers. We'll come in here and we'll walk on the paper and you'll see read and write appear. So we'll read, it's empty, 
you read, it's empty. So now let's write on this magic paper. We'll read it again. You'll see now it says hi. And if we come over to this magic paper and read it, it also says hi. So that's going to be different from our two gems. So those are local variables and these are global variables, two different things. The last type of variable that you may deal with is going to be a constant and a constant just means the variable can't be changed at runtime. So for example, if I made a new variable, you can see made a new variable, but we're making it a constant. We're naming it progress. We're setting it to one and that's fine. No errors there. But if we were to try to modify this, and we try to compile, you'll see it, give us an, it gives us an error because you cannot change a constant value. So it won't even let you run the game if you're trying to modify it. So this will forever be at a progress of one. You'll never be able to get past that progress, no matter what you do. So that pretty much covers the basic variable types. Um, if you have any questions, you can hop in our Discord, ask around. We're more than happy to help you guys out. So see you next time.